Welcome to Breaking Barriers. You know your path. We know the obstacles. And we can teach you how to tear them down. And now your host, CEO and founder of Adapting Social, John Vigero. I got a legend next to me right here. Uh, a guy who gave me a big opportunity in the beginning of my company. So I really appreciate you and your family. Um, this is TJ Shaheen, uh, the EVP at Builders General. TJ, thank you so much for being here, brother. Yeah, man. First I time, really, long time. I know. It's, it's about been too time, long. Right? It's been too yeah. long. But, you know, so much has happened over the years. And one of the things that, like, I love about BGS is literally the family effing history, yeah. right? It's four generations, 1931. Like, talk to me a little bit about that, right, from the, from the family inside. Like, yeah. how, how does that feel? Like, what's the, the, the pride in that? Well, it's pretty cool because if you think about it, like four generations, family business, it's a, a rarity these right. days, right? It's been over 90 years. We celebrated our birthday uh, this past October a year ago. Let's go. Um, and for me, it's, you know, fourth generation, it's, it's crazy, but I love it because when I speak about it, I speak about my great grandfather started the business in 1931, coming oh over from Lebanon of all places, we're right. Lebanese, and right. um, it, it was, it's pretty cool. So they started, they started up in Cranford, New Jersey, and then my grandfather came along, he took it over, he passed away in 1978. My dad came along with his brother Phil and the sisters Mary and Betsy. So it, 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 that's, that, that's where like, I started to get involved, right? Mm. So started when I was young, when I was 10 years old, uh, I was getting into like some mischief. My dad was like, nah, it's not <laughs> happening anymore. It's like, you're coming to the lumber yard. So, so that's where I was. That, that was my like purgatory. That's where I had to like do my time. But right. once I got out of college and just coming in, um, you know, work with my dad, work with my uncle and, and, and my aunts. And it's good because when I go out and see customers, right, right um, I, I, they definitely can relate to that because it's your, your family, right? And mm -hmm. a lot of our customers are family owned businesses as well. Right. Multi-generational. Right. So we can speak the same language. And I really feel that's caused a lot of stickiness between our customers that have been with us forever right. and our employees that have been with us forever. Right. Um, and that's important. I, I think there's, there's substance there and it's, it's, not, it's definitely tangible because you're 90 years, four generations, it's powerful. It's insanely powerful. And the beautiful part about that is the, I think the true definition of the American dream is coming here from another country right. and, and really building something and now having your family take it on and four generations later, yeah. here you guys are. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you remember. Do you remember who introduced us? So I actually got introduced to LP first. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember yeah, who it was yeah. that introduced us, though? I believe uh, one of our vendors. No, no. no. So it was, it was one of your customers. One Might still customers. be. Okay. So do you remember Captain Rob, uh, Rob Counselor? Yes, yes. He, Pelicano? He, yep, <laughs> yep. But he, so he was one of our vendors, yeah. but after oh, they okay. got... Um, they kind of went, went through Different ways, ways and stuff like that. That's got where we started. Yeah. Got yeah. it, Yeah, yeah. So that was a good introduction. But you know, one of the things that I think is incredible is like, obviously when I first heard about BGS, it was through him, right? He was, he was one of my uh, first few clients. And he was like, oh, you gotta meet him family business and everything you're saying, and I think that's the reputation behind a business is what people are saying when you're not in the room. Right. And it was so cool because again, I was a younger kid at that time. Yes. You know, he's like, oh, you gotta meet this company. And I was just like, oh my God, to hear about all the stories. Like he knew all of everything you just said, yeah. right? And that's the dynamic that's so cool about BGS. Yeah. Everybody knows it. Now. Heading on, like, so, you know, what, what's the pressure though like, right? So like a lot of people like ask some questions in, right? And, and some of the questions that we got in for you were about family, family business dynamic, right? right, right, right. So the challenges, the hurdles, the yep. good, the bad, the ugly. Yep. Um, shout out to Betsy, by the way. I still love Betsy. Yeah, yep. she's the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. what, like, what are the challenges of, of like being in a seat, right? So obviously you're, you're, in, a, you're in an executive role in your right. family's company. Um, what's the challenges of like moving the ball forward, right? Yeah. You're, you're the next generation. Yeah. Now, I think for, mo for the, the first and foremost thing is that you know, having good uh, parental guidance is really, it's massive. And, and for me, my dad, my uncle, it's my godfather. So basically yeah. I have two, you know, two dads <laughs> and they're like giving me guidance on, on, on how to grow up in this business. So after college, um, working in the business, I think that is so, so important um, to develop your rapport with your employees so that by the time you get to that executive level, right. management level, they know that you've done all those other things that they've done. They're not gonna say, well, he's never driven a truck or he's never been out in the yard or he's never worked sales. What, what does he know? I've, I've done all that. I've right. done all those steps. So for me, you know, as, as, a, as a general that's you know, out in the field, you, you, you earn your stars and your patches and you come back 
to, to your, your, your leadership team, which at the point was my dad and my, my uncle. And, and when it's time to go, it, you know, it, their roster spot opens up right. and you're there and you're ready. They want to make sure that they're putting somebody in there that's earned the spot, mm. not so necessarily deserves the spot. Love you know what that. I'm saying? Love that. So like, as opposed to like me coming in, working somewhere, maybe I'm just not, you know, hitting on all cylinders. I'm like, you know, what? I'm going to go work for the family business. Do you deserve that spot? Maybe if you're a family, you know, you, you can maybe make that call. But you know what? I'd rather put a family member that's earned that and deserves it. I love that. That's big, man. And I think, you know what? A lot of times you see the opposite where people, oh, you're my son or your right. ex. So you're just put in this position. Correct. But then also, but you know what? Then the other people don't, the, the, um, the person that's getting promoted to their demise, right, right is, is not having the same level of respect for that position because they didn't have to like work in the field in the right. lumber yard and right. work their way up. And, and honestly, I think it's so important because people typically will go in and they will have that ability to say, wow, I saw TJ when he was a kid yeah. doing all these yeah. different things. Yeah. And then from that point, you know, building out that whole right. concept. And also your customers, customers see it because the customers are in there all the time. Mm -hmm. So they see you working out there. They see you on their job sites delivering. Right. They'll see you uh, managing a, a sales counter. Uh, becoming a sales manager, they, they see you it, progress and, and mature in this in industry, and that gives you that respect with those customers. Right. Just like I said before, where it gives you that respect with your employees. We have, um, I did a, did a conference uh, last uh, fall, I brought up a stat which I thought was pretty powerful. Over 60% of our roster is over five years, right? Wow. Tenure. Wow. And a lot of those employees have been with us at 48 years, I think, uh, is our it's most senior one all the way down to we have 30, 20 year employees, they want to see that. They want to see that because if you don't, you just insert somebody in, mm -hmm. there's going to be blowback. And we've, you know, that's, that's not good for morale. And you no. want to make sure that if there's somebody in there, you have employees that have been there for a long time, everybody's watching, the customers, everybody's <laughs> watching. So they want to see somebody that knows it, gets it, and you'll, that's going to just, that's going to magnify down the road a thousand fold. So yeah. They, they just want to hear you go up that ranks. Yes. So people respect somebody who goes through, you know, in a family business who has to go through the actual corporate climbing, I guess, or the climbing yep. as opposed to just getting there. Yep. Um, and what we were talking about, um, we have my guy TJ here, EVP, if you're just tuning in at VGS, family business, been around literally 90 years. They celebrate their 90th birthday. Yep. Um, and so we were just talking about the pressures of being in a business like that, that's a successful company. Um, and you know, and, and carrying the torch and the baton on. Yep. Um, and the one, so the next question that we got in is, what is it? What is it like? So, for instance, like you have a daughter, mm -hmm. right? Fifteen year old. So you're gonna yep. be driving yep. soon. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, is there any? And I know, obviously, I'm sure some of the other brothers or cousins and stuff like that have kids too. Yep. Like, what's the thought process behind like them coming in the business? And is that like a Shaheen thing where yeah. it's like? You're coming here or, yeah. you know, how does that work? Yeah, we, we keep them in the basement about two inches away from the water bowl, <laughs> right? We just like throw bread down there and just, when you're ready, we'll let you know. We'll let you know. But now nah, it's, it's, you know, it's, <clears throat> the opportunity is always there. Um, and just like it was for me, you know, there was no, we weren't forced to go into the business. I have um, a, a sister and I have two brothers. Um, and and this, my sister, uh, Lisa, she, maybe it wasn't for her, whatever. She, she, wa she really loves the medical field, so she wanted mm. to be a nurse do, and, and do that type of thing. So she's been uh, doing well with that. Um, and my other two brothers as well. It, it was just a matter of time. That nobody was forced to do it. Right. But the opportunity is there. And, uh, but you have to, you know, it's not that it's going to be easy. You have to just come in and you have to, you have to realize that you have to earn your time and that respect from your mm -hmm. employees and also your family members to say, you know what, all right, you're ready for that next, that roster spot to open up, whether it's in management, whether it's in sales, it could be back office stuff. Not everybody is always for your business right. and your business can't always be for everyone and that Correct. includes your family members. So, right. And sometimes it's a hard conversation to have. Um, so for me, you know, with my daughter, it's going to be, look, if, if the opportunity is there, that's fine. But you know, you have to go to school, you have to get educated, you have to um, make sure that you come with all of your arrows and your quiver to be ready to, to fire on all cylinders. Right. And you also then have to show us, not just you know, come to us with a, with a resume or uh, look at all these things that I've done outside the business. That's all well and good. You've tried to become more multi-dimensional, more well-rounded athlete. Right. Um, 
to an extent that you're ready to go. But at that point in time, when you're ready to go, you still got it. You're coming into an environment, a culture of, of a family business, and you have to realize that nothing's going to be given to you. You have to work for everything. Mm. You have to earn. You have to. It. It's such a good mindset. And now that I have my first child, right, who's right. going to be three months soon, these are the things I think about, right? And like not giving them, not dealing with them with kilt gloves and like, oh, you know, you know, right. you're, you know, you're my daughter, you're my mm -hmm. son. So here you go. It's like, I, I think the biggest thing that I've learned from just through other people like yourself are like, you know, giving your child, you know, a fortune when you die, right. you know, doesn't make them successful no. or, or live a better life. It's letting them know the tools and how to operate through this life and be a hard, you know, a hard worker and somebody who's yeah. good in making impact. Um, so I love that. Yeah. And I think that's so important. Um, you know, if you if we were to ask, you know, your daughter, right? If we were interviewing her, you know, and saying, hey, you know, what's your dad like? You know, what do you think she would say? You know, how, how do you think she would characterize you? <sighs> she knows <laughs> that you know I can be very, I can be strict. Yep. I have to, I have to make sure that there's boundaries there. But she knows I'm crazy. I'm funny. I'm relatable. Um, I try to act like a kid because a lot of times you're, you're in an environment where you have to be. Uh, it, it, you know, always be this position of, of um, uh, you know, just ma either management. You come in this grown world, and I, maybe I was a kid that never wanted to grow up. When I come <laughs> home, I like to have fun, and she'll be like, Dad's acting crazy again. I don't know why. He's like, he's just running around, bouncing all over the place. But, you know, I need to have that outlet. Like, I need to be able to, you know, close the door, get away from the office, and just have fun for myself and, and just act like a kid. There's nothing right. wrong with that. So for her, yeah, she's going to see who I am, what I do, but again, I'm multidimensional. I'm not some guy who's coming home, sitting on the couch and watching football all weekend. I'm, <laughs> right. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna do stuff and, and have my own hobbies and my own passions that I love to do right. outside of work. Right. And you know what, that's that's okay. You need to have those outlets. Sometimes I just like vacuuming like my rug because it just it's a mundane thing. Do a crossword puzzle, just do something that's just, you don't have to answer anybody. You don't have to figure it out like and get it resolved like right here and now. The crossword puzzle, you're never going to finish. So put it over there. That's done. You know, um, vacuuming is like just a thing. You know, who, who would think like just up and down like up, up, that, that makes them happy. Right. Simple. That works. It's not a difficult task. <laughs> it needs to get done. I'll do it. Right. You know, I love that. And, you know, I, I also enjoy that. It's I think it's a little more therapeutic for me, too. Yeah. Like I grew up just doing it. My mom was always like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I appreciate that that example. So. Where do you see BGS going next? Like, what's the next step for BGS? Like, where do you see, like, BGS? Again, and the cool part about companies like yours mm -hmm. is that you're not necessarily planning for, like, I, I think five years or ten years is, like, so minute for, for a company like yours. Yeah. It's like, what's the next couple of decades look like for BGS? Man, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the next couple of minutes look like for Village <laughs> because all we've been doing really since COVID is really just kind of, you're just, you're just trying to, it's playing a game of whack-a-mole. You're trying to make sure your customers are happy, trying to get stuff in <laughs> for your customers that have taken a month or two months, three months, eight months to come in and it's, it's broken and complete or unfixable. You have homeowners calling. We're trying to do everything that we can do to really kind of keep our heads above water to satisfy our customers. Right. Uh, kind of level up with where the market is right now. We're in New Jersey. We're in a good affluent market area uh, that we're able to kind of uh, tuck and roll with things, um, right. and, 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 and sometimes the, the economy uh, may be tougher in different parts of the country, but it seems to ha some have a delayed effect mm -hmm. in where we are. So we always have to be cognizant of, of where the market it's is, coming. pending recessions. Right. Um, but for us, you know, we're fortunate. We've had boots on the ground for 90 years. So for us, that, that doesn't go away anytime soon. That, that is your foundation. That is there, and, you, and it's up to us to keep leading that forward mm. and keep pushing that snowball and allowing it to gain um, just momentum. Momentum and, and it's filled, but it's filled with passion. It's filled with experience, mm -hmm. and and it's 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 so important to have those attributes as a company because that will help guide you for the next five, ten years. Because as long as you have that, you have the heart, you have the passion, you have guidance, and you have a direction to go. You just you just got to keep doing sometimes what you're doing because mm -hmm. you've been doing it for 90 years and you've been doing a pretty good job at it. Right. And sometimes that's hard enough to manage just to make sure that your eye doesn't get taken off the ball because you have a successful formula that's working for you. Right. Take care of your employees, take care of your customers and just keep repeating that right. and they will take care of you. Right. Bottom line. Yes. What has been like something that you could say that you've learned from your grandfather and your great grandfather, like, has there been something you like a takeaway you had just like from what they've done, their persistence and perseverance? Yeah, I know from my grandfather, the one thing that he taught me was don't jump in the pool if you can't swim. 
Right. That's the only vision I have. Right. Because I, I was four years old. He died when he was 78. But I'll never forget. I, I was in the pool at his house. He went over, grabbed me by my, I had a big afro at the time because, yeah. you know, it was <laughs> all over the place. And just, he grabbed me and put it and said, you know, that, that's, the, that's the vision I have. But, but, but aside from not really knowing my great grandfather, not really having a chance to develop my relationship with my, with my grandfather, but I can see that in my dad and my uncle. Got right? it. Right? And they, they're doing that same thing to us, is instilling that DNA that we were all born with and giving us the guidance to lead a company that has foundation with employees, mm -hmm. customers, and doing it the right way. Right. That really, it's been passed down from generation to generation. And we gotta keep, we gotta keep going with that. And that's, but that's, that's my great-grandfather taught that to my grandfather. It's taught to, to my dad and my uncle. And it just passed down. Right. It's almost like that secret sauce when you're making it on Sunday if you're Italian. You're like, where, <laughs> this tastes so weird. You can't, you don't know about it. Just, this came from your great-grandfather, his father, his mom. And yeah. But yeah, it's, but that's, <laughs> it's, that's, it but it's that secret sauce is the bottom right. line, right? right? So it works and, and, it's, and, and you just got to keep, again, just staying with that, that eye and that laser focus, knowing that, look, this is what's worked. And sometimes you, you don't have to fix something that is working pretty well for you. And that isn't broken. Right. So what, what have been some of the challenges, right? So a big, uh, one of the most questions we got was like, how do you successfully operate with your family? When in most, so in most family businesses, right. there's a lot of turmoil because of the closeness. Right. The not like, again, like if you, when you're close with your, with your brother or right. your cousin, it's like you can tell them, hey, Fuck you, right? right? Or right. whatever, right? right? It's right. like, it's like you, know, you know each other. If you're pissed off, you're right. not scared to share your real emotions. Um, how have you guys been able to, like, I'm gonna ask you personally, right? right? It's like, yeah. what has been like your way of navigating and keeping a good professional relationship in the office? It's, I tell you what, it's not easy. Uh, you, have to, you have to sometimes separate work, family, and, all, and on top of that, we're, we're, we're all dealing kind of with this, a lot of the same things, but maybe just in a different scope of, of, the, of the company. So we have to make sure that we're all swimming in our own lanes, right? right? Um, if you start crossing over, it's like that scene from the Ghostbusters. It's like, uh, don't, Ray, don't cross the streams. Because, you know, <laughs> shit goes, you know, it, you it, it gets real, that. right? But I, I do believe everyone's gotta stay in their swim lane. Everyone's got a, a, something that they excel in. You know, my, my strength has always been sales, marketing, um, you know, like a business development, yeah. you know, with customers and employees and, and vendors. Uh, and, and some other are real good, like my cousin's real good at IT, my brother's real good at property management, uh, my other brother's real good with, with sales, and, 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 and we, we all have our strengths, we all have our weaknesses, but if you try to, try to have too much where everything's, it, it doesn't, can't work that way. Everyone's right. got to focus on their strengths and weaknesses, and, and, uh, and the more family members there are, it can be complicated for sure. But, I, but again, the guidance that, you know, that was passed down, because mm -hmm. it's been family business, it's four generations, that our previous generation had to deal with it, and the generation before that, and uh, we've managed it this far. Let's so. pop that back up on the screen. Four generations. So yeah. one of the things I always like to ask, though, you know, is in, in you know, business, right, at your level, mm -hmm. you know, with your family and stuff, what does, like, if, if, in your own mind, like, paint me a picture of what success to you looks like? Like the whole picture, family related, right. business related, your hobbies, like what is the wholesome picture to, to TJ of success? I, for, for me, success would be able to put my head on, on a pillow at night and just you know, not have stress of, <laughs> of thinking about the next day or waking up in the middle of the night and writing stuff down because you know you're gonna forget it in the morning so I gotta write that down because I'm not gonna fall asleep. Right. That, that is not success for me, right? right? That's right. anxiety, that's <laughs> right. like driving me crazy. Right. But I think knowing that, you know, for me, my family's taken care of, um, that I'm, I'm trying to do the right thing. And, and you're not always gonna do the right thing. You're gonna have hiccups and, and mistakes along the way. Certainly I have, um, but at the same point in time, if, if you can just work on what maybe didn't work for you and make yourself a better person, um, for me personally, I gotta keep doing that every day and making sure that I'm a good father, a good husband, um, a good owner, mm -hmm. uh, a good vice president, a good uh, co-peer uh, with, my, with my employees that, that we work with every day. Right. Um, I got to I got to do a, a, a better job at all of that, you know, but but there's never going to be perfection. Right, right. Right. But you can as long as you're trying and your heart's in the right place, your mind's in the right place. You know, like I said, we talk about this snowball gain momentum. You know, sometimes that snowball is going to melt. You got to wait till the following year. Right. All right. Do it again. And right. Do it again and do it again. And you just got to have repetition and drive and, and, and have that passion to be able to to just never give up. Right. Right. I love that. 
What is like an adage or some sort of quote that over the years it could be a Shaheen original, it could be a TJ original, one you picked up, but is there some sort of adage that you think about when it comes to, you know, exactly what you just said, you know, right, right. right now, again, in your level, in your position, I heard this quote from the CEO and founder of Intel, and he said, only the paranoid survive. Right. <laughs> Because you're always thinking, you're always going, you're right. up in the middle of the like you just yeah, said, right? Yeah, yeah. But has there been an adage that you think about or quote when it comes to perseverance? Perseverance. Yeah. Well, I, I just said it. I mean, I always say never give up. I mean, that's, never give up. It's, I mean, you, and you, you can't. I mean, you just, you just can't. You always have to. And if you do, then maybe this just isn't for you, right? Maybe, maybe that marriage wasn't for you, so you gave up. Okay, right. it's not wrong, right. right? Make yourself a better person. You went down a path and it just worked, didn't work. So you gave up. You cut off to just save yourself and make right. yourself... You know, give yourself like a, a reset, right? Right. You start a career somewhere. All right, you gave up. Maybe that career wasn't for you. But when you find something, you find that wife, uh, you find a, that that position mm -hmm. at a company, and if you do a good job at just persevering, mm -hmm. right, and just never giving up and just showing that on a day-to-day -day basis, you're going to do well in your career. Mm -hmm. You're going to do well in your in your uh, your personal home life with with your partner, and you're going to do well for your kids, right? Because they see that. Like my daughter. She just started doing the mirror, right? The workout thing, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah. So she's down there doing Pilates and stuff. I'm like, what? you were just doing that yesterday. She's like, yeah, I got to do four, four workouts a week. Like she set <laughs> her own goal, right? right? She set her own bar, yeah. but she knows that she, she can't give up because she feels like, she's like, mom, my abs don't feel like sore anymore. My legs are sore. I'm like, oh, I'm like, dude, you're 15. Like, where are you going? You're going to win the Olympics or something? I'm like, come on. But no, right. but, she, but it's that thing. She, she's got it because of me. Right. Know, I'm just so... Like, I, I have to have a routine. I have to have structure. That's the way I work. But I can be a little crazy at times and just kind of bounce all over. But that's fine. That's how, that's who I am. I'm not who you are, you aren't. Who I, what works for you doesn't work. It's not going to work for me. But right. for me, for myself, it's you just can't give up. You just got to find a way. Just I don't care. If you're playing golf, that's a par four. I'm no choice for looking. I'm not my ace shot. I'm like, oh, where is that ball? Like, I won't <laughs> give up. I'm like a dog with a bone. But it's like, dude, just pick it up. Get in the truck. You just know? go. Yeah, right, just right. go. But yeah. I love that. And... So that leads me to my next question. So, you know, one of the things that we've seen over time with, you know, essentially each entrepreneur, we like to ask, you know, and, and ask the, the, the guest before you to ask a question for you. Okay. Right? So the last guest that we had um, essentially framed out a question, right? And so if you were not doing what you're doing at BGS mm -hmm. and that wasn't even on the table, what would you be doing right now? So it's funny that you asked that question because <laughs> I don't know if I'd be doing it, but I did, when I went to school, I graduated with um, uh, a degree in, in, in uh, fine arts drama. Okay. And I always wanted to do that, yeah. right? And I had dibbled, or dabbled, whatever you want to call it, yeah. a little bit in it. Um, but always a bridesmaid, never a bride, right? So I'd always get the call back or whatever. Right. But I think that's, you know, something for me, you know, I, I love, I always love being on stage and, and doing stuff like that. And it's also kind of helped me with my career because a lot of times you got to be, forward uh, with, with customers or not, mm -hmm. not be able to get out of your comfort zone with vendors and, 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 and be able to you know, talk about your company, sell your company. It's almost like being on stage. And, and sometimes what works in the northern part of New Jersey right. doesn't always work in the southern part Different. of New Jersey. Different. Central. You, I could go 30 minutes in each direction and you got to be able to pick up on that and be a chameleon, right? So you got to right. be able to tuck and roll, know, know where to go. Maybe you wear jeans to one place and you dress up in a suit <laughs> another place. Right. You know, I, I'll go down South Jersey. It's a whole different thing, you know? So, um, but for me, yeah, I, if I wasn't doing it, wasn't there, and, and I would have loved to uh, have gone off and, and, and done and tried to do something along that. Um, I don't know if anything would be <laughs> happening, but you know, who knows? Because I mean, I, I can't like retire one day and, and be that like 70 year old guy on like CSI. He's like <laughs> trying to get out of his chair. He's like, oh. <laughs> so yeah, no, it's, it, it was fun. I like doing it, but. I, I really do believe that just just by doing something like that in college, right. and who knew how it could help you, you know, just again be able to be able comfortable with yourself. We do a lot of yep. trade shows. We do a lot of um, uh, just uh, you know customer building events, uh, relationship building events with vendors, and um, it, it helps to be like that guy that's not in the corner, that doesn't have anything to bring to the table, <laughs> as opposed to somebody that can bring something to the table and is extroverted and passionate, colorful. People remember that. Your, your customers will remember it. Your employees will remember it. So they're good characteristics to have. Right. It's not for everybody, but I do believe that 
That's something. If I had to, I'd, I'd love to, you know, take another stab at it one day. I sure. love it. Yeah. I, I want to be. I want to see this. Yeah. This has to happen. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll sign. Hey. I'll sign it for you. I'm like, oh, <laughs> check it out. My new DVD. Here we go. Do they even make DVDs anymore? No, they, I don't think they do. Don't know. That's yeah. a good question. It's, if they actually produce everything's any. Everything's cloud based now. So right. Yeah. Well, actually, the only, so. the only CDs would probably be PS, PlayStation, or Xbox or yeah. stuff. But but even now they're doing that. They're doing the uh, the downloadable versions of that now, right? Yeah. I think. So now they're not even making those. They don't make anymore. MP3s anymore. Fours, no. fives. No. no. Right. no. So, so one of the things um, that I, I, so for people listening here, uh, you know, a big start to my career was obviously working with you guys. Yep. And I learned so much, man. And one of the things I want to ask you, and I'm gonna, it's, I'm gonna allude to it because of, there's a purpose of it, is you guys have four or five locations, yep. right? And since I've known you, besides when you guys added Long Branch to the to the chain. Is there a plan to, to open up more? Or is it like, we are happy where we are? Like, we want to just do great where we are? And we don't want the other headaches? Yeah. Well, no, look, I mean, we would love to be able to, to do that. And we, we actually have seven locations now. Oh, good. Yeah. And, uh, but but the, the thing, the, la the labor pool for us right now in this market, right now, is so shallow. Right. I'm having a hard time getting drivers. I'm having a hard time getting people to work our, our sales desk. Um, we have a, an aging sales force in our industry. Yep. Um, and... And it's, and it's an industrial-wide topic that I'm part of a couple different boards in our industry. And it's, everyone's facing the same challenges. So it's, would we like to? Sure, if it presented itself and it was right, right made sense. Um, you don't want to get too far away from what, what you do do well. I'd rather focus on doing what you do do, right? right. But doing it really well. Yeah. Instead of trying to like, hey, look, we got 30 but locations. You know, you go to different, like there's no, there's no intimacy. It's all transactional. And we're more about emotionality, dimensionality. Like I need my sales guys to, to know, have that sixth sense with their customers, right? Yep. You're just not taking orders. And, and the way you start to lose that because I feel like if, if there's only so many family members that can help kind of push down this sixth sense, this, this expertise and wisdom that we all have mm -hmm. um, to, to, to really, uh, you know, keep that success going and multiplying it, the more, and, and like you said before, the, I feel like the more you have you got to be careful what you wish for. There's, there's going to be a huge, um, you know, burden to make sure that, you know what, we're not watering down what our secret sauce is, right? right? We have to do what we do. We have 170 employees. I think we could probably have like maybe around 185. Mm. Um, and it's so hard to fill those roster spots. And on top of that, like I said, we have an aging sales force. So a lot of turnover is going to be happening <clears throat> over the next couple of years. Yeah. And we really do hope that this labor pool, if, if things start to slow down, the labor pool starts to get a little deeper. Right. And we start seeing more people that want to come work for us. We've been trying to sell our company as a place to work yeah. rather than a place to buy. Mm. Right. Because I, I don't I don't really need that right now. I, we need to focus on growing our employees, growing that farm team, yep. getting that next generation of my sales guys that are going out and seeing all of our customers. Right. So we got to work really hard on, on our internal stuff, our internal customers, our employees, right. and making sure that that farm team's there um, to take over and, and, and make sure that we keep taking care of our customers. Because the moment you don't take care of your employees, the moment you don't take care of your existing customers, you're dead. You're dead, you're in, the dead in the water. You're right. So don't, don't expand. Right without making sure that you're okay here and right. have a foundation. Because if you do, it's all gonna collapse. Yeah, that's, that's true. In my opinion, anyway. Uh, so, and the reason why I asked that question was because I'll never forget this. So we were at one of your trade shows, <clears throat> right? And um, I'm here, I'm talking to people, you know, whatever. And this one guy, I'll never forget this, comes in like a tank top, yep. right? Comes in a tank top, he's with his girlfriend, I think, mm -hmm. at the time, whatever. Yep. Yep. Comes walking in, he's got all these like tattoos, muscled up. And so I'm like, hey, you know, well, I'm starting about websites. And so he stops me and I'm like, he's like, he's like, for, he goes, first off, why are you yelling at me? <laughs> because I was like, hey, how are you? He's like, why are you yelling? So, but he's like, you know, because he saw my little banner and he goes, listen, he goes, how old are you? And at the time, I don't know, I think I was like 22, 23 or whatever it was. And I was like 23, he goes, when I was your age, a little bit older, he goes, I had 15 to 20 trucks on the road. I had all these employees, blah, blah, blah. He goes, I had all these headaches. He goes, I don't want more of what you want to provide me. He goes, because now it's me and two trucks and, right. and my family and stuff. And he's like, we're really good at what we do. Mm -hmm. And he goes, and I'm making more money now than I did then. Right. Right. And mm -hmm. I have way less stress. Right. And I never forgot that because I remember him saying that and being young. And like, when you're young, you're like, oh, I want right. to go out there. I want to take over the world. I want to yep. go have a million employees. Yep. You don't want to go do X, Y, Z. I want to do all these crazy things. 
And, but you don't realize all of the, the things yeah. that come with that. A million percent. I mean, I, my whole background, I played hockey my whole career, so I was always very competitive. And that, was, that worked to my disadvantage, right? Mm -hmm. and, and it would always get in the way of, of your of, competitive of, nature. Of, yeah, just, it was just the way it is. So like, if I saw a, a competitor of ours or I saw something, I, would, I just would just, you know, you just feel it. But you know what, dude, it's, it's not even about that. It's like, do what you do. Worry about yourself. Right. You're not on the ice playing against other people or on a basketball court. Or, or, it's not even about that. But you come out of that with that, that sports mentality where you want to just, you want to score that goal, win that game, you know. And it's like, but it's not that anymore. You, it, the game has an expiration, right. right? The goal only does one thing, right? Okay. But when you're in business, like, you got to look long term. You got to worry about your legacy. And if you come out acting like, you know, a cheetah on crack, you know, <laughs> that's not like, what got us here, right? No, no. Slow and steady, man. Slow and steady. That's all you got to do. And just do what, like I said, do what you do really well. Yeah. So it took me a while to really begin to swallow that and understand it. And I think it was eventually force fed by my, my dad and my uncle at the same point in time to say, you, know, you got to pump the brakes. You know, there's bigger things to worry about here and you got to look long term. We've been doing this for 90 years. We want to keep doing it for 90 years. You come out of college and thinking that you're going to take this thing to a whole nother level in a week ain't happening. All right. <laughs> so just, you know, just pump the brakes. But, you know, but, but it's good, though, that they can see that, that I'm passionate about what I do. And as I've matured in this environment, I realize that this road is a long road and you got to just keep it between 10 and 2 and just just laser focus on what you got to do. Dude, that was that was absolute fire. That whole rant there, that's going viral. We're that's going everywhere. Right. I love that. And and honestly, you never know when you're out there speaking, you know, your truth and doing what you're doing right now. Yep. You never know who needed that message. Right. And that guy behind the camera right there, I think he he's a hockey player yeah. too. Yeah. So you, yeah, you were speaking you right to that guy. So, <laughs> yeah, so that's what I'm talking about. Um, okay, cool. So as we get to the end here, man, you know, uh, you know, one of the things that I like to do is I like to do a little exercise, okay. right? So it's going to put you off a little bit, you know, it's a little bit of, a, of, a, of an out there question, yep. right? Oh. He, he's got tequila in that, so. <laughs> but, Just drink it. Yeah. But, um, okay, so, you know, when we talk about legacy, because that's this whole thing, you know, what I love about this podcast, a lot of it is legacy based. Yep. So a lot of times, you know, when business owners, entrepreneurs, whatever, you know, think about legacy, we think about from where our shoes are, you know, our feet are planted here today, forward, and what we're going to be remembered by, what we're going to leave for you know, our kids and our family and stuff. But one thing that we typically do is we're looking forward. Right. So I, had a, I got an exercise that was uh, done in uh, high school at some point by one of my history teachers who was like in the military. And so I like to do this on my pod. So essentially, you know, I want to reverse engineer that thought process. So if you were here today, right, about to write your gravestone. The one thing that's going to way supersede you, your kids, everybody. So the generations of Shaheen to come right. will come and see, you know, okay, this is my great, 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 right? Right. What are they going to read on that? All you can do is try. Mm. So all you can do is try, you right. know? And I believe that that is just, that's, there's passion behind that, right? So you can say, all you can do is try. What does that mean? If you get up every day and you just try, right? You just try. You have you have that passion and you have that fire where you, you just try it. You ain't gonna be perfect, but if you could just try, that's all I would say is it's all you can do is try. You know, we, we talked about never give up, right. but it's all it's really talking about the same thing. It's just, you gotta have that inner passion, that inner fire and just persevere and just, just keep laser focused on what you wanna do for your family, for your career, and for yourself. I love that. And this is, this is where he plugs himself. This is where you plug yourself. So we're going to pop it up on the screen yep. and stuff. But where can people find you? You know, website, yep. social for BGS, all yep. that stuff. And, and ladies, he's taken, unfortunately. Yep. So, you know, don't follow him on social. Yep. It's personal social. Yep. <laughs> yep. Well, look, if you're looking for a job or help yes. for hiring, buildersgeneral.com slash careers. You can find me on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, all the social media. You just look me up, TJ Shaheen, S-H-A-H-E-E-N. Boom. Thanks for having us, guys. Dude, Appreciate hey, it. Loved it. We Loved think, it. Love we, being here. Thank you, man. Yeah. We, you know, I'm a big believer in time is one asset we don't get back. Yeah. So you spending it here with us today, talking to our, you know, our crowd and, yeah. you know, really spending a lot of wisdom, you know, yeah. a, lot, a lot of good stuff. I um, really appreciate you, man. Yeah, well, look, I'm always trying to learn, trying to better myself. You've come a long way. I'm happy to see where you are today. Point Pleasant, New Jersey, thank this you. is where we are. And you know what? It's, we can't do it enough, right? We right. can't 
continue to share, exchange ideas, thoughts, collaborate, and, and hopefully instill more wisdom for us so that we can be better people That's right, it. in what we do. Students of life, right? That's it. Students of life. That's it. TJ Shaheen, everybody, BGS, yeah. EVP. Thank you so much, guys, for watching in. We appreciate yeah. you all. Create a great day. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, guys.